Hey everybody, uh, this is going to be a, a quick build and review um, of uh, an LCR meter that I've just put together. Um, I've been looking for an LC, well specifically an, uh, an inductance meter, but uh, they generally come packaged as LC or LCR meters. Um, so I actually picked up this um, LC meter which measures as inductance and capacitance. So I've been looking out for one of these. Um, uh, recently because uh, playing with my mag stim um, and um, winding coils and stuff like that I've been needing to know um, about inductance of coils and stuff like that so I've not had a, a, an inductance meter before so I thought initially I wanted to spend a decent amount of money and get something um, of decent quality but it's not something I can really afford right at this moment so what I've done is uh, bought a cheap kit off eBay uh, I thought I'd put it together, see what it's like, and um, sort of go from there. If it turns out to be not any good, then um, I've not really wasted much money, and I'll just save up and get something decent. But if it turns out that it does seem to work to a, a decent standard, then um, it'll tide me over until I can get something uh, something better. So this particular meter that I've bought, it uh, came off eBay. It's uh, listed as an M8 LCD digital inductance capacitance meter. Um, it comes as a kit, so you just get all the parts and you solder it together. Um, the seller is TT Mall Zone 365, and it cost a total of £9.13 shipped from China. Now I should also say there are quite a number of um, uh, these types of LC meters on eBay um, and uh, and other sites as well. I'm sure you can find them on uh, you know Amazon and Banggood and all that sort of stuff. Um, they all appear to be largely similar, um, obviously copying each other's designs. This one I noticed um, instead of having multiple inputs, um, it actually has a couple of relays, so it obviously switches in and out whatever it needs to do to do the um, to do the measurement. So. It just seemed a little bit better to have uh, a single connector and let it switch in and out. Whether that makes much of a difference, I don't know. But it just seemed to be uh, a little bit more practical like that, so that's why I picked that. Now the kit, as it came to me, just arrived in a bag full, uh, a bag of bits and a PCB. Um, there's no instructions on how to put it together, um, so you're going to need some sort of basic um, knowledge about what you're doing uh, and where things go. Um, it's all pretty logical to be honest. Um, I didn't have any issues um, apart from one with the, the power connector which was easily resolved. So what I'll do now, um, before we have a, a quick look at um, uh, how well this actually works, um, there's a, a quick build video um, shot in, in time lapse. Um, so if you can, you can watch that and there's a small voiceover to describe what's actually happening at the time. So I'll see you in 60 seconds. So here you can see me assembling the uh, LC meter from um, the component parts. I first went through and identified all the resistors and put all those in first. Um, there wasn't really any issues uh, putting it together. Um, maybe a couple of little minor ones. Um, you didn't get a connector for the um, three um, connections on the front to connect to the, um, the actual components you want to test. Um, but I, I did have one that I could use anyway and the only other issue I had was uh, with the LCD. Um, the way that it uh, had been put on, it, there was a surface mount resistor on the back of the LCD which fouled with the power input barrel um, connector. Um, but yeah, a quick bit of use with the file and that soon sorted that out and it sits, um, f sits flush now. So that wasn't really an issue. Um, I'm generally quite happy with uh, how it all went together. And then finally at the end the LCD goes on and I adjust the, uh, the trim pot and we're ready to go. Okay, welcome back. Um, so uh, the build went pretty straightforward. Uh, as I mentioned there was only a slight issue with the, the barrel connector here uh, fouling with the display. It wouldn't let it lay flat. Um, so um, generally it went together pretty well. Um, the uh, PCB is all through hole. Um, it, um, I also noticed that uh, it didn't come with any sort of connector on on here. It was literally just the, the holes in the PCB. So I've just soldered in a, a connector that I had. Um, the LCD um, just clips in here. 
you know, exactly what software that has on it, I don't know. Um, so yeah, that's absolutely fine in terms of the uh, the actual hardware. Um, the mounting hardware all comes with it, with screws and everything, so I'm quite pleased with that. And you can see here the small issue I had with the barrel connector. Um, it actually just got in the way of this small um, surface mount uh, resistor just here on the back of the LCD. Um, so I just had to file that down just a slightly little bit and um, that made it fit fine. Uh, one thing that did amuse me um, on the uh, the back of the LCD, you have uh, <laughs> QA pass on there, but it's actually the silk screen. Um, so obviously they're assuming that they're all going to pass then. I thought that was a bit amusing. So the uh, the actual uh, kit itself has um, an onboard regulator. It's just a bog standard 7805 uh, linear regulator, so you can throw um, sort of anything above about sort of six, seven volts, all the way up to probably about 20. I've not actually checked the spec of the uh, um, the voltage regulator. Um, probably going up to 20 is probably a bit much because there's no um, there's no heat sink on the actual voltage regulator. So probably around about 9 volts, 10 volts is probably about your limit before the regulator starts getting too hot. So I'll just turn this on and you can see that it just boots up with this little screen and um, it comes up with uh, set OK and then we have F equals and then we have a large frequency there. Um, we also have a capacitance value and an inductance value. Now what these actually mean um, I don't really know but I, I'm sort of taking a guess that it's probably um, the values for um, self-zeroing when it turns on. Um, obviously it would have to uh, zero itself out so I suspect those are probably related to that but given that there's no instructions included um, you just have to take a guess really. If anybody um, knows anything about the software that's actually on this, um, has a little bit more information about how it works and uh, um, what the numbers actually mean, um, that would be handy if you could leave those in the comments. So the menus on this are operated pretty simply, there's only one button here um, to actually go through the menu, uh, if you can call it that. Um, if you uh, click first um, you have capacitance which is measured between um, this point here and this point here, this uh, centre pin is common, you have ca uh, capacitance and inductance um, the capacitance on this side is uh, for uh, ceramic caps, things like that, small values. Uh, and then on the other side, uh, you have the electrolytic. So at the moment, this is testing for um, just normal capacitance, so um, small ceramic capacitors, things like that. Press it again, and you have inductance. One more time, and you have um, electrolytic capacitance. This is less than 500 microfarads, and then the next range is greater than 500 microfarads. And that is the, uh, the sum total of all the menus. Um, there's not really anything, anything more to do, as far as I know. So we'll just try testing uh, some components. Um, I'll just try first with uh, some ceramic capacitors, some small ones, uh, and see what values we get. Then we'll move on to the inductors, and then we'll try some electrolytics. So the first one to test is a small... Um, 100 nanofarad, so that's showing, yeah, um, pretty much spot on 100 nanofarad. Okay, next one is uh, 47 picofarads, 47.5, 48.5, sorry, so that's good. Next up we have uh, 10 nanofarad. And that's showing um, 9,600 picofarad, so that's sort of 9.6 uh, nanofarad. I think I would have preferred it to actually read that in in nanofarads rather than um, thousands of picofarads. Just slightly easy to read, but that's fine. Uh, next one is um, 100 picofarads. This is actually um, a 3 kV. 3000 volt capacitor, so uh, all the other ones were um, about 50 volts, so see if this makes in any difference at all. We have uh, 102 picofarads. Excellent. And for inductance, I went onto eBay and bought a huge great big uh, grab bag of uh, um, inductors. 
So it should be a good range to test. So uh, first one to test is uh, one millihenry. Um, one thing to note about um, these components that come on the uh, on the paper tape is um, you probably want to snip off um, the bit of lead which is actually in the tape because uh, if you just pull these out and use them put them straight into a into a connector or or even try and solder them um, you can end up with glue left on the the actual lead um, which can cause problems when you're soldering or bad connection if you just making a connection to the actual um, lead itself so it's always worth just chopping them off um, to sort of uh, avoid avoid that issue so I'll just pop this into inductance mode right so that's securely in there now um, you can see there that the inductance is showing as 864 micro henry's uh, now these are um, silver banded um, inductors so they're 10% tolerance so um, there's something not right somewhere okay next one up is uh, 6.8 micro henry's and that is reading 6.2 so that does seem to be okay so next one is uh, 220 micro henry's so that's 198.6, so that one is not quite right. Next one is uh, 680 microhenries. Five hundred and sixty-five, nowhere near. Okay, let's try something a bit smaller. Um, this um, is one microhenry. That's there, almost bang on that one. Let's try another small value. Okay, I think this is the smallest one I have, which is uh, 0 0.21 micro henrys. And it's reading 0 0.17. Yep, 0 0.1716 seems to be dropping for some reason. So there the inductance values seem to be a bit all over the place to be honest. Some are almost spot on and some are way out. Now I don't know whether this is because uh, of the the cheap bag of inductors that I bought or whether it's um, something wrong, inherently wrong with this. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Um, anyway, let's uh, step on to the uh, electrolytic capacitors and see how good it is at measuring those. Right, I've just picked out a random random load of uh, electrolytic capacitors um, some of these are really cheap and nasty horrible brands um, Jake C um, that's a decent one but it's really old it's an RS branded one from 1987 it's never been used these are brand new Panasonic um, that's a Panasonic as well brand new um, we've got, uh, oh that's another Panasonic, uh, there's a Rubicon there and we've got a, a little Sanyo. Okay I've just changed the range on this to uh, test for electrolytics at less than 500 microfarads. So we'll try the small ones first. Uh, this one is just a little, tiny little um, Sanyo branded one, it's one microfarad and it's showing 1.06, so that's good. Um, next one up is this uh, Rubicon, which is 47 microfarad. That's 45.5. That's good. This little little one here. Um, a cheap one, Huang, which is a 10 microfarad, 9.78, and next one, we've got a nice uh, Capzon, or crap, Crapzon, 
should be known as. I'm going to try that one. That's 470. Four hundred and seventy-four. That one's okay. And all the rest now are over five hundred microfarads. So I'll just switch up to the the higher range. This is a Jake C six hundred and eighty microfarad. Six hundred and sixty. Yeah. So on to the Panasonics. This is a thousand microfarad. We're getting 1,091, so that's good. Panasonic again, 220 microfarad. Sorry, 2,200. And we're getting 2,080-ish. That one's good. Um, we have another Panasonic, 3,300 3, microfarad. And we're getting three, four, eight, zero. So that's good. And we have um, another Jake C one. 1,088. So that's good as well. And finally, this RS branded one, which is old. Very, very old. This should be a 1,000 as well. And it's a 1,076. Okay, capacitance uh, checked out on those ones. Um, let's try some larger capacitors. Right, just to try these uh, larger capacitors, I've uh, got some test leads connected up into it just to make it a bit easier for me. Uh, so first up, we've got this uh, 3,300 microfarad, 450 volt capacitor. And that's saying, I've got a slightly dodgy connection there, 3,040. So not quite what I expected. And compared to my other um, capacitance meter, that is uh, slightly low. Because my other one reads this at, um, it actually reads at 3,600. So there's a slight discrepancy there. Okay, let's try something a bit bigger again. So this capacitor is a 3000 volt, 185 microfarad capacitor. And we're getting um, 184, spot on. So overall, generally, yeah, I'm kind of happy-ish uh, I mean, it did only cost a tenner, um, so you can only complain so far. The uh, capacitance seems to uh, be far more accurate than the, the inductance. Um, unfortunately, the inductance seems to be a bit all over the place, really. Um, you know, some come out spot on, some are completely off. So, not really sure what's happening there. Um, I think what I will do is... Uh, play about with it a little bit off camera, I might actually install it in a box or something just to see whether that uh, that helps. Um, but yeah, generally I'm sort of um, of the inclination now to uh, put this to one side and actually save up and buy something uh, decent and of known quality. Okay everybody, thanks for watching, I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.